Alright, so nagbabalik tayo sa ating violin tips and tricks. So for today's video, let's talk about movements. No? Uh, general body movements. Or kung paano tayo gumagalaw when we're playing. And ano ba yung mga um, effective movements and mga ineffective movements na dapat natin tanggalin. Okay. So, set up ko lang. Ayun. So, matayo tayo ngayon. Baka sa video, di na tayo tumatayo, guys. So, sa pag-play ng violin, we can't really uh, say na hindi tayo pwede gumalaw. Diba? Because we want to be relaxed. And again, we've talked about a lot of movements. Not necessarily within the arms and hands lang. We talked about head movement. We talked about body movement. But, what are these basic movements that would hinder your growth in playing? No? Ano ba yung makakahinder sa mga galaw natin? So, pag-usapan muna natin ano ba yung mga dapat nyong gawin when moving. So, as a uh, violinist, when you're standing up, you can move freely, no? Diba? We, we put our left foot uh, in front. Para nakakagalaw tayo ng ganito. Nakapag-sway tayo. And swaying is actually an effective way for you to switch weight, shift weights when it comes to your uh, movement. So, it's okay. So, this type of movement is perfectly fine. Especially when you're playing uh, slow pieces, it's, it's okay to shift movements. Okay, another type of movement is moving your bow violin up, right? So, swaying left and right is perfectly fine. Okay. Pero ano ba yung mga pinagbabawal. Hindi mo pinagbabawal, pero mga maghihinder lang sa pagtugtog mo. So, for example, kunin ulit natin yung tinugtog natin second movement ng Mozart. Pero gawin natin siya ano ba yung mga unnecessary movements na hindi ka matutulungan. Yun. Nakita nyo? Yung vertical movement. Sometimes, sa mga concert masters, kailangan yung bigay. No? Binibigay natin yung downbeat. Pero after nun, it shouldn't come, it shouldn't be parang maging necessary sa inyo na mag-conduct. No? So, wag natin gagawin yun. Kasi, naapektuhan yung tunog. Diba? Parang nagkakaroon ng putol yung mga sound natin. So, less yung mga ganong movement, more of this movement. Side to side movement. Para mas maganda natin magawa yung mga ginagawa natin. Okay? So, yung pag-lift din ng violin, it's very okay when you're trying to shift up. No? is when we try to move lower and we're shifting na ginagalaw natin yung shoulder. So again, shoulder movement shouldn't be stiff, no? You could move but you never raise your shoulders. Why? Kasi once na nagkaroon ng tension yung isang part ng shoulder mo, naapektuhan na rin yung kabila. So magkakaroon ka magiging stiff na. Yan. So ano ba yung pang contra diyan? Is to drop it and then try to roll your shoulders and then try again so kahit na medyo feeling mo kailangan mong i-ganon you don't have to 
no your hands are perfectly fine para maabot yung mga matataas na shifts you just need to move your elbow and once you move your elbow kung mapapansin niyo tinataas niya talaga naturally yung violin no so okay lang ang taas ng violin wag niyo lang siya ibababa kasi once you drop your violin down yung elbow niyo dinidikit yan sa katawan so nare-restrict yung ating movement so as much as possible keep it here Diba? Shoulder level and your elbow away from your body. Para pang shift ka, mas madali mo siya magpupuntahan. Unlike pag nakababa yung violin mo. Diba? Once na dumikit na yung elbow mo sa katawan mo, mare-restrict na yung movement. We want our extremities to be able to move freely. Diba? Also sa bow, no? Hindi pwedeng tumugtog na nakadikit na yung elbow sa katawan. Almost, no? Especially E-string posture. So, those type of movements that will restrict your movement generally are not good. So, make sure na wag, tayo, wag natin siyang maroon. Again, so, up-down movement, masyado. You can do that without uh, sacrificing yung phrases. No? Pwede mo namang ibigay ng So you can give down beats, no? Hindi mo kailangan bigay one and two and so don't na puto yun sa so it's okay to do it per bar or per phrase, but you don't need to do it na parang binibigay mo na. May mga times kasi nagan. No, we try to restrict those movements. So. Those are some of the movements that you can consider to be helpful and those are also some of the movements you can consider not helpful. So, again, the main goal is to be able to move freely without sacrificing yung ating mga galaw na magpapatunog ng instrument natin. Diba? Again, ang pag-aaral ng violin, hindi yung violin mag adjust sa body natin. Diba? We try to find compromises para yung instrument ay mag-fit for us to work. No? It's not the other way around. Kasi, tayo yung may mind to be able to adjust. No? Sila wala. Your instrument wala na yan. So, it's a given that you have to work around it. Instead of uh, making rules for the instrument. No? So, your body conforms to the instrument. And also, your movements should react in a way, na makatulong sa ating mga pagtugtog. No? So, you can move like this, you can move this, tataas, pwede, pero huwag mo lang ganun. A lot of vertical movement, yung nakaka-disrupt kasi siya ng uh, personal space, no? Kung saan ka naga, ano? Kasi tatama na yung, ano mo, bababa yung height mo, so maraming magagalaw ng ganitong movement. So, madalas iniiwasan natin yun. Usually, kapag nag-move ka ng up and down, is hindi siya directly ganyan. No? So, madalas pa ganun. Diba? So, hindi, dapat, with, it flows with your uh, playing. Okay? So, I hope natuto kayo dito sa ating violin tips and tricks. And yan. Yeah.
pagbaba ulit. <laughs> so, I hope to see you on the next video. Abangan nyo yung ating uh, episode 2 ng The In-Depth Violin Guide. And yun, magtutuloy-tuloy na natin yun every week. I think magiging upload schedule niya is Monday 9am. So, I hope you tune into that. And also tune into this. Kasi tuloy-tuloy lang tayo dito. You can still comment down below kung ano yung mga gusto nyong pag-usapan nating mga techniques or mga tricks na gusto nyong matutunan when it comes to playing para mas mapabilis yung ating progress. Okay? I hope you do, you're staying safe and I'll see you on the next video.